Welcome to the BoxingLocker.com's vlog, episode three. I am Matt Goddard, former professional boxer, now boxing coach and fully qualified personal trainer. I've been in boxing for 19 years of my life and long may my obsession continue. You can find me on Instagram at The Boxing Locker, on Facebook at The Boxing Locker, at www.theboxinglocker.com for my website. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, comment down below, like the video, or dislike it if you disagree, and, um, and keep interacting. So, the topic of today's video, as mentioned in the previous vlog, in which I discussed the Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury matchup, is in fact Deontay Wilder. Now, I'm not talking about Deontay Wilder in a general sense. I'm going to be specifically talking about the, uh, the rumors, the uh, antagonism between him and his former coach, Mark Breland, Mark Breland, um, and, and basically on my end, put to bed what I consider to be wild, wild theories about how, um, how Wilder was cheated out of that previous fight. So first thing we talk about is the big fight itself. Tyson Fury absolutely battered, destroyed, beat to death, out physiqued, out physical, out boxed, out moved, out punched and absolutely obliterated everything that Deontay Wilder had to offer. And subsequently Deontay Wilder was uh, retired by his corner um, at, at a very, very opportune and prime time to protect him from further serious harm. Mark Breland, obviously in the corner, uh, pulled the plug, threw the towel in. Um, as far as I can see, that is only the correct thing to do. You've got a guy in there who is showing absolutely zero chance of, uh, of changing the tide of the fight. You know that it's going to take a hell Mary of a punch to end the fight. And even then, Tyson Fury has the opportunity to get up. Um, you've never seen your fighter battered in a physical way in the way he's being in this fight. You've never seen him as hurt, as shaken, as wobbled, um, and as weak as you've seen him in this fight. And subsequently, you as the cornerman, Mark Breland, have made an appropriate and correct decision to protect your fighter's health on their behalf because you know, as a former elite-level, world-level fighter yourself, you know absolutely certifiably that you would rather go out on your sword as the fighter than ever be stopped or pulled out. However, you hire a coaching team, to prepare you for a fight and to protect you during that fight. That is part of their role as your coaches. And subsequently, um, it, it is Mark Breland's respond, responsibility to do exactly what he did. Deontay Wilder had absolutely nothing whatsoever to offer of any value in that fight that could in any way have changed the momentum of the fight. He's a fighter whose power is most uh, expertly delivered at the correct range. He didn't have that range once in the whole fight. Um, he's a fighter who relies on, on a firm base from which to throw big punches with massive rotation and absolutely obliterate fighters. I personally like the guy prior to this second Tyson Fury fight. And, um, and, and subsequently, as I said, Mark Breland made exactly the right decision. Deontay Wilder had nothing left um, and, and he would have been badly, badly hurt if that fight continued. Now... Here's where Deontay Wilder lost me for good, potentially as a fan. After a beating, a one-sided battering like that, what a, what a warrior, what a, what a real hardened elite level fighter does is accept the loss. Don't make excuses. Don't talk about what happened in camp. If changes need to be made, they make those changes, then they come back and, and, and they get the win. What happened after the fight was this. Deontay Wilder blamed the fact he was wearing a very heavy outfit to the ring, his own decision. Ridiculously big, over-the-top, obnoxious outfit to the ring that he thought in some way made him look fearsome and intimidating and actually just made him look like a bit of a wally. Um, and, and he blamed it on that. And then uh, everybody laughed at him for that. So he, so he changed tact and he blamed it on Tyson Fury having no fist in his gloves, hitting with an empty glove, which although uncomfortable and, 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 and although uh, scratching and, and scraping and, and ripping 
of the skin wouldn't knock you around like you were being hit by a by an elephant, um, which a lot of the blows that Fury landed on on Wilder did to him. So, I mean, an empty glove does not do that much damage. Uh, you, you, anyone, anybody who you are, I don't know who's watching this, could be stood in front of me now and I, I could hold a, a 10 ounce empty glove and I could hit around the face with it as hard as I could with every bit of power I could possibly muster. And, and you as the person in front of me would go, oh, that really hurt. You might get knocked to the side. But you're not you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna cower, you're not gonna you're not gonna get completely out of your boxing position, particularly being such an experienced fighter. You're not gonna look visibly visibly hurt and, and physically wince at the punches being landed on you. Um, and, and certainly after one or two rounds of those blows, um, as a fighter, you would go, "This isn't really doing much damage to me. Time to go to war." Um, and 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 you would you would take it out on your opponent. Um, so again, very very poor excuse. Don't get me wrong. Fury lands open gloved quite a lot. He lands with the inside of the glove quite a lot. He lands with the tips of his gloves quite a lot. None of these things are necessarily um, completely legal, but equally they're not they're not illegal in a, in a in a historical boxing sense. We've seen guys doing things like this for absolutely generations of boxing um it's it's intelligent use of your capabilities um there's absolutely nothing wrong with using the inside of the glove to defend and manipulate an opponent's position manipulate an opponent's glove set up an opponent there's absolutely nothing wrong with hitting with the inside of the glove i mean it does less damage so realistically it, it, that's a, a moot complaint um and uh and and frankly it's it's uh it's a, a terrible way out to complain about something, you know. Um, people complained about Joe Calzaghe slapping and using the inside of his glove all the time before fights. But but um, after fights, you know, they, they, they took their losses like, like champions, like warriors, like they should have. And, and that's that. Um, whether you're being hit with the inside of the glove, with the knuckles, um, with the side of the glove, you're a boxer. You're a, you're a warrior. You're a gladiator. You're you're a champion. You're a you're an undefeated forty and oh, I think he was at that time champion who's knocked out thirty nine of your opponents. It's it's ludicrous to presume that that you have any right to to diminish that by by making such ridiculous statements after your first real battering. Um, and it and it really disappointed me. Uh, I, I was a big Deontay Wilder fan. Anyone that's ever talked to me about heavyweight boxing um, could tell you. Uh, Deontay Wilder, for me, was the second best heavyweight on the planet. Tyson Fury always first. Anthony Joshua came in third, not because of skill set. I think Joshua has the better and more complex skill set. But I think Wilder's equalizing ability with that, with that, um, with that power element meant that he would, he would beat Joshua at some point in 12 rounds. He's also got a very good chin, which was probably detrimental for him in this in this Tyson Fury fight because perhaps if his chin wasn't so good, he would have been stopped or knocked out. Actually, he's got a good chin, and so he was just getting sort of beaten, bruised, and bullied. Um, and, yeah, well, there we have it, guys. I, I think uh, two very poor excuses. Um, Mark Brayland um, drugging, drugging his water. I mean... How how far fetched do the accusations have to get before you realise you're just making excuses for your own terrible performance and your own enormous lack of of focused boxing ability? I mean, there is absolutely no chance that a guy who pulls you out after I think it was four or five rounds pulls you out after that many rounds um, cares about you little enough to to drug your drink um Breland Breland stayed in that team with a guy that he said himself is completely uncoachable for god only knows how long obviously being paid relatively well I would presume but nonetheless the pride of a coach the pride of a fighter a former fighter would say uh, if you were being ignored and treated poorly then then you you would you would leave the team. Many guys have done it in the past, even at the at the cost of losing a lot of money. Um, and and the the blaming systemic racism um, 
for his loss as the final excuse is, is just ludicrous. Um, if, if a fight goes to the cards, you have an argument for blaming racism. If a fight goes to the cards, you have an argument for basing favorite, blaming it on favoritism. If a fight goes to the cards, you have an argument for um, being cheated, um, being, being robbed um, for uh, the opponent's team uh, bribing people. There, there's tons of arguments if a fight goes to the cards. If you get absolutely battered, beaten, and you're bloody and sore and uh, your face is a pulp, that is not cheating. There is absolutely zero way that you can claim that is possibly cheating. You've been beaten up. It's a fight. That's what happens. The, the, the fight happened and, and you lost. You got whooped. And this isn't coming from somebody who's a, a Tyson Fury fanboy. I, I personally don't really like the guy on, a, on an outside of the boxing ring level. I find him quite, quite frustrating. Um, I don't like the, the entertainer side of him per se. I like that he's adding that element to boxing, but I don't, I don't like the way he goes about it and the way he talks about people. But on a boxing level, he's exceptional. And he, he, he took your soul that night, Deontay Wilder, and, and that was that. Um, and all of the excuses since have proven that. And I think uh, the, the Mark Breland talking about how uncoachable Wilder is just goes to show um, his own arrogance and his own conceited nature because you have a guy there with an immense natural talent. He's, he was brilliant. He had everything he needed to have to be devastating in the division and he was devastating in the division. However, Presuming that that will always be enough is, is arrogance of the highest order. He, he at no point seems to have improved his boxing ability. He at no point has learned to defend, to move his head, to move his feet correctly. Um, he gets his feet all tangled up all over the place. Um, he, he throws some strange and unconventional punches, which were often effective, but often left him looking like an absolute fool when he missed an opponent. Um, and, and that, that on a on a fighter's level, for me as a former fighter who who spent fourteen years of my life in boxing rings all over the country, um, it just seems insane. It seems ludicrous to to think that you are so good that you you don't need a coach and you don't need advice and you don't need to work on specific improvements. Because nobody is ever perfect. If you look at the, the best boxer of our, of our generation, uh, Floyd Mayweather, or, or another boxer to name uh, Andre Ward or um, Canelo, or you look at these guys, every single one of them is in the gym all the time, being coached, being coached hard, being, being broken down, analyzed, um, and, and reconfigured in a way that is better. And these are guys that were at the top of the game for a lot longer than Dante Wilder was, if you consider when he finally started stepping up his opponents. Um, I, I, I am disappointed and disheartened by everything that's happened with, with Wilder. As I said, I was a big fan. Um, I picked him in the first fight to, to knock out Tyson Fury. I was wrong. I picked him in the second fight to knock out Tyson Fury and I was wrong. But now, I mean, going into a third fight, exactly the same thing would happen again because Wilder's pride, his arrogance, stays, stands in the way of him improving um, and leveling up as a fighter and, and doing what he needs to do to make himself uh, a, a higher caliber of opponent for somebody like Tyson Fury, who is immensely adaptable, as we've seen between the two fights. And, and just to... Just to um, fully weigh in my opinion. Fury won the first fight comfortably by miles. Um, Wilder won one round. I gave one round drawn. The rest I gave to Fury. And the second fight, Fury was absolutely dominating. So Wilder's only element failed him twice. And that is the, that is the one punch power. And it failed him twice. Because even when he did hit the guy, he still got up. And then all of a sudden, Wilder looked like he had absolutely no idea what had happened and he seemed completely stunned by the fact that somebody could get up from one of his punches. Um, something that, that good coaching um, would have prepared him for better. But 
but there we have it. You know, Mark Breland is responsible. The the suit he wore to the ring is responsible. Tyson Fury cheating is responsible. Systemic racism is responsible. And essentially everything except himself is responsible for his own defeat at the hands of one man inside four corners of a ring in which he had every opportunity to do whatever he could possibly do to get the win. So there we have it, guys. Um, that's my opinion on the whole thing. You can take it, you can leave it, you can hate it, you can love it, you can agree with it, you can disagree with it, whatever it is, drop it in the comments, let me know down below. Um, and, uh, and I'll see you for the next video, guys. Remember to check out www.theboxinglocker.com and subscribe to my website to check out all my coaching content. Don't forget to head over to Venom and use the code TBL10 for a 10% discount. Head over to Protein World and use the code BOX35 for an epic 35% discount. Head over to my Teespring store, The Boxing Locker, and use the code TBL Family for 5% off all your Boxing Locker merch. Um, take care, guys. Thank you for watching. Share as widely as you can. Comment, give it to your friends, post it any way you like. Just spread it far and wide and let's see how many views we can get on this bad boy. All the best and I'll see you for the next video. Take care. Thank you.